Hello, I'm Jamie from the Alan MacArthur Foundation. We're an independent charity with the aim of inspiring a generation to rethink, redesign and build a positive future. So today we're going to have a look at the five basic principles of the idea of a circular economy. The first is that waste is food. So we design things by intention um, to be value in another cycle. We completely eliminate waste by intention. So in the technical cycle, we actually look at how we can design products that are made to be remanufactured, refurbished, that are designed for disassembly. So we can take those apart and reuse the valuable components and materials in a second, third, fourth life. Biological nutrients, again, designed by intention to be restorative. So we're looking at choosing the materials so that they can flow safely through the food farming system or the wider ecosystem. The ability for this to then add natural capital back into soil stock, into energy and into the phosphates and fertilisers which are needed for the regeneration of new biological nutrients. So these flows of materials are often termed nutrients because nutrients are valuable. The term was coined by William Madonna, Michael Brangart and Cradle to Cradle and the idea is to look at all stuff as having value. So the stuff in the economy is all seen as being nutrient. Diversity is strength. Systems which have many nodes, many connections and many scales are more resilient to external shocks. Two examples of this. The first could be in a living system. Something like a forest which has many different types of plant life, many different types of bacteria and fungi. That is able to withstand a forest fire because of the resilience of the flora and fauna in that ecosystem. It's able to regenerate, it's resilient to shock. The same could apply to a business and its supply chain. If one business is reliant on one supplier and something happens to that supplier, or one material and something happens to that material, it is not resilient. It isn't able to come back and regenerate. We also have to look at balancing diversity in a system. We have to look at balancing efficiency with effectiveness. If a system becomes too diverse. It may be that in a supply chain this is too costly and too slow and cumbersome, whereas if it's too efficient it may become too brittle. So here we're looking at optimising the system as a whole. Diversity is also absolutely key to creativity and innovation. It's the ability for us to look at many different solutions to many different problems and to create new ideas and generate new opportunities. Energy comes from renewable sources. In a circular economy, we shift away from using finite fossil fuel energy towards renewable energy, which comes from renewable sources. The interesting thing about this is that the circular economy is a system. So this allows us, through the regeneration of products in the technical cycle and the biological cycle, to actually change the amount of energy that we're using in the system. It's called the threshold level. So the system working itself enables us to, to move towards using different types of energy energy from sources which are ultimately um, inexhaustible, so for example solar energy. If we looked at the world's resources as a bank account and we looked at using fossil fuels, we'd be eating up our capital. We'd be using things that we only have once. Whereas if we look at renewable sources, we're looking at actually generating energy from sources which are ultimately inexhaustive. This provides us with a huge opportunity to rethink the way that we power the system as a whole. Prices equals real cost. Prices and messages, they must tell the truth, i.e. they must reflect the full cost in order to inform rational decisions. The price should tell you all you need to know about the real effort required to provide a service or a product. It's about setting the rules of the game in order for the system to function as a whole. Money equals stuff. Money is created to provide a medium of exchange for goods and services. Money, therefore, is not a real store of value. It's an exchange mechanism, like an IOU. When we look at a circular economy, it's really important that we look at it with a systems thinking perspective. So we look at how something interacts within the wider system as a whole. The circular economy, to a large extent, mimics living systems. Living systems are able to regenerate, but they're also complex, and it's important to have an understanding of systems thinking within that. 
So if we look, for example, at weather systems, we look at the water cycle, we see that there are a large number of interactions between a system within a whole and also with other systems. In science, the more we learn about living systems, the more complex we find them to be, and the more fascinating with regards to how we might be able to apply that to the rest of the world, business, innovation and future creativity. So let's just conclude on where we are. So the idea of a circular economy doesn't tell us exactly where we want to get to, but it provides us with a coherent framework to start rethinking aspects of the future economy, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, where it fits within that system. And this provides us an almost endless opportunity to start to rethink, redesign and build a positive future.